Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yesterday, during debate on a, uh, a bill, the, the gentleman from Christian 9 made the comment that he wished he didn't have to be presenting that bill. And, and I think all of us understand that uh, we really wish that we were not here, but we are here, and we must address this issue. Uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone is aware uh, that uh, last, around last July, uh, reports came out that there was financial difficulty uh, at Kentucky State University. Uh, at that time, uh, a couple of things happened. Uh, the uh, former president did resign from his position. Uh, the governor did issue an executive order which directed the Council for Post-Secondary Education to go into Kentucky State University, uh, directed KSU to cooperate with CPE to investigate and find out what the true financial situation was. Uh, as a result of those uh, investigations uh, and reports that they have been able to come by, we have learned that uh, in order for Kentucky State University to uh, finish fiscal year 22 uh, in the black, or actually at zero, uh, to get to their baseline, they're gonna need an additional $23 million. Uh, so this legislation does appropriate $23 million in the current fiscal year. This money is set up in the legislation as a loan, which in the future could be forgivable by a future General Assembly. Uh, I think more importantly, uh, I think it's important that we do have the appropriation, but more importantly, the legislation does set accountability, responsibility, and transparency that deals with our, our institution here in our capital city of Frankfurt. It would direct the CPE go in with a maintenance plan. Uh, there are several different areas of maintenance, of responsibility, of oversight. Uh, they would work with KSU to try and get to a point uh, where they can move forward. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this does nothing to address the financial needs of KSU going into the next fiscal year. At a recent uh, KSU Board of Regents meeting, uh, CPE uh, presented a proposal to them informing them that they need to cut their next year's budget by $7 million. And they recommended a plan. Uh, and they are working on how to, cut, how to best implement that plan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, none of us wanted to get here. And I've had people ask me, well, I'm going to address a couple of points. First, I've had people ask me, how did KSU get in this situation? That was asked in the committee meeting uh, just uh, recently. And, and I asked uh, for some more information that I think maybe will help explain this. Uh, this did not happen all at once. Uh, this shortfall happened over a period of time. And, and I think these figures here will, will kind of highlight where the situation may have uh, evolved from. If you go back to the 2019 fiscal year for KSU, uh, their budget for personnel was $21.4 million. Uh, their actual expense was $28.7 million. Fiscal year 2020, they had a budget of $24.4 million. The actual expense was $29.5 million. Fiscal year 2021, the budget was for $20.8 million in personnel. Uh, their actual expense was 29.2. So this happened over a period of time. It primarily happened by uh, a combination of adding personnel to the university, of increasing salaries. I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. I'm not saying that uh, that was a situation that may not have been needed. However, it was outside the financial ability of KSU at that time. I've also been asked, well, why do we need to do this? Why do we need to support Kentucky State University? And I guess the question is, what will happen if we do not pass this legislation, if we do not appropriate these funds? Uh, I have been told that uh, KSU does have a line of credit that they can draw on, a $5 million line of credit. However, uh, they anticipate that uh, those funds would be exhausted by the middle of April. Uh, they, they, they probably will need those funds to meet March payroll, and they definitely could not meet April payroll. We have uh, pro close to 2,500 students who are currently there, and I think that's the important thing. This legislation is about the students who currently are at KSU, the future students, 
And we all understand, we talk about workforce all the time. We talk about needs all the time. We need educated, trained individuals. And KSU has a specific mission. Uh, as the only uh, public HBCU in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, most of their students are first-generation college students. I think it's over 70%. Uh, 82% are Pell Grant. Uh, I'll be happy to entertain any questions that anyone may have. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I move for a passage of House Bill 250.